What's going on everyone? In today's video, we're here for part two of the how to dominate textbook season. I'm joined with my co-host and co-founder of Bookmind, Victor Gagas. What's going on, man? How's it going, Joji? Part two, yeah. Part one was great. Make sure you go back to check that out. And uh, we're about to drop some extra knowledge here. So let's go. Quick recap of part one is pretty simple. How to identify whether or not a book is actually a college textbook. Also understanding kind of when generally you should buy them and when you're planning to sell them. The other being, make sure you can sell a book, right? Making sure you're plugging the ISBN into Amazon Seller Central and that you're eligible to sell a book. And then third, making sure that the book is not counterfeit likely. So that's kind of a recap of part one. We went way more in, in, in depth and detail, so make sure you check out part one. Part two is gonna be, what do we see on Bookmind that excites us, Victor? What are the things about college textbooks that we're looking for? What is the best buy price? You know, how do we determine if we're gonna buy this book but not buy that book and so on? So with that said, dive into our screen. Go. This is a reminder, everyone, when you're over here on Bookmind, remember you can click, can click this book type and go ahead and select college only if you wanted to. You could also do the same for high school. And honestly, we're not perfect at being able to identify every book exactly and accurately properly. So, you know, if you're only looking at all your round books, Victor, you also will tend to see some college books in there. But again, you could look at college books specifically here. These are books we absolutely know are actually college books. And what Victor and I have done is actually found a couple of books that we're really excited about that we want to share with you and and more importantly tell you why we're excited about these so that you can identify patterns so yeah. the first thing victor is being able to identify like the current costs today being a good buy price so can you talk to us a little bit about like how would you determine whether or not the price right now is a price that you'd want to buy the book at yeah well we talked about this in the first series but we're trying to find a pattern here right so we yeah. found a pattern already which is august and january and basically, in between those seasons, they tend to have valleys. A lot of a lot of college books tend to tend to do that. And so we wanted to look to see if this particular book was in that valley. And so we're in June, and the and what we're able to see is both uh, January and August having a pretty high price point. And now in June, the actually the, the there's a, a pretty huge dip there, and that's a really great price to kind of show you that like okay, this book is right around nine dollars. And yeah. for the most of the season was, uh, well, for the other two seasons was selling for like in the $25, 30 $35 range. Right. And uh, yeah, so that, that just on the price alone, just by looking at this, it actually looks like a really good book. Right. So you want to look at today's price versus kind of what did the shoulder prices and the peak prices yeah. of the previous two textbook seasons look like? Like Victor mentioned, it looks like in the 30s, 35s. Right now we're at nine. So hopefully you're all seeing that $9 is significantly below those amounts. So we are in this sort of valley, right? Now, just because we're in a valley, though, doesn't necessarily mean we want to just buy the book just because it's in a valley, right? So can you talk to us a little bit about the other thing that we're really looking for in terms of this bottom graph with author count? Sure. So like you just kind of think of things of like green check marks, right? Yeah. So one of the check marks is, that, OK, it's a college book. We can sell it. We, do, we, we went through all of that in the, in the first video. But right. now we also want to make sure, you know, that it's in a valley. And now we need to make sure that the used offer count isn't doing something crazy. At, like we want to make sure it's still within a, a relatively normal range that the uh, in the past years have kind of been the same way. So so right. one of the first things to do is see where we are right now. And it looks like we're at about like 30, a 31 um, count as a used offer count. And so we right. want to go back one entire year all yep. the way to the beginning of the chart and see where we are there. And so we're going to compare the two and kind of write on this particular chart, on this particular book, it looks like, okay, we're within the a normal range. So there's nothing that jumps out at me that says, don't buy this book. Matter of fact, yeah. it actually tells me, okay, yeah, it pro probably it's actually a really good, really good book and probably you're going to have some good success with it. Absolutely. So we just by used offer count simply mean the number of people actually selling the book in use condition. So what you can do is go over actual, you know, to the actual Amazon listing on Amazon, and you can actually see how this says new and used from 40. So this is actually going to be 40 new offers and used offers. So it's a combination of the two. But if you go and click this button, you'll actually be able to see if we just filter and only looked at use here, it's going to give us that 30 option, right? So if we go back down to the Keepa graph and we look at day, you can see how this says 30. So essentially, all we're all keep us mapping in this bottom graph is, well, how many people we're selling the book in use condition. In other words, what's the competition, right, Victor? Right, so right. at this day, June 16th of 2023, which is 365 days ago, there was actually 40 people selling this book in use condition. Now, one year later, going into this next textbook season here in the next couple of months, there's 30 people. So you've seen a pretty, so that's a pretty significant decrease in the number of sellers. So mm -hmm. that's something, Victor, that makes us excited, right? And like, even more excited because most of the time, actually we're finding books 
that are slightly higher than right. uh, year over year, but this book is actually lower uh, versus right. year over year, which means that wow, this actually has lower has a lower amount of used offer count, which more than likely this means that this book will sell even higher this year. Right. It's a really good, um, yeah, really good point there, Victor. And we will talk more about pricing. I think maybe video four, yeah. or video five of this, how to dominate textbook season. But yeah, definitely, you know, the number of sellers, the pe- number of people offering the book on the listing is going to impact the eventual uh, prices of the book. So we'll talk about pricing strategy again in a later video. But what I wanted to show you is another book, Victor, that yeah. also has the sort of valley, right? We see, again, identify a book that has August, September, January, February, textbook season, and then has us going into this valley. But what's something here that makes you maybe give you a little bit of pause here? Well, I see two things. One, I mean, first off, I'm seeing that that like valley happen and I'm getting, okay, on on just that alone, I'm like, okay, cool. This is a really good book to probably purchase. But then I'm noticing a few things that I've kind of like learned over time. One seeing like a stair step. Do you see how like there's like a yep. there's like a step on every couple of yep. uh, like couple of I guess every week, and yep. so that's a telltale sign that that means that Amazon warehouse is on this deal. Right. And when that happens, that that's not a really good sign because Amazon's warehouse is actually really aggressive on just dropping the price until all theirs have sold out, and which right. means they they could actually just kill the listing off. So that's one of the yellow flags. The second one is on this on the bottom chart. On the yep. bottom chart, you can see that the used offer count has drastically moved up and it is out of the range of normal uh, for this book. It, it hasn't, we haven't seen that high of an offer count since Never. this book has been right, since this book has started. So those two together has caused me not to like this book anywhere near as much as I was liking it when just seeing it on price. Right. Yeah. And so going back to what Victor said about green check marks, these are like little red flags. Right? Yes. It's right. a red flag. Hey, offer count has never been higher than it has been today. That's a red flag. That means it there's is. never been more yep. competition to sell this book than right now. That's not a good sign. And then the other thing, like Victor said, you have Amazon warehouse sales tanking the listing with this stereotypical staircase down. So this is a good example of a book that looks like it could be good. And a lot of inexperienced booksellers will end up buying this book and then realizing that the book is not going to do well. And again, the reason why Victor and I know this is because we, we purchased these books before yeah. in the past and we learned from the mistake. And so maybe it takes you buying one or two of these books to learn from your mistake, or hopefully you'll be able to identify this sort of pattern when you're looking at books in the future. But we're hoping you see a pretty big difference between the book we just saw here in terms of offer count. Mm-hmm. And um, by the way, we don't actually see Amazon warehouse deals on this listing no. at all, the previous right. one, which is good. Yeah. Now, we're going to look at one more uh, copy or one more book, and then we'll get out of here. So we'll look at this book, Classics of Criminology. Okay, so we've identified a clear pattern August, September, January, February. Yep. Uh, we're starting to get down into what looks like a little bit of a valley here. What are you seeing here in terms of, let's say, offer count, Victor? So I'm seeing actually a pretty healthy book. I don't see anything here that's putting a yellow red flag up for me. Um, it had a pretty good, healthy um, August season and January season. And one of the ways you can tell that is by the used offer count, both of those seasons kind of dropping, right? right. Kind of right. happening here, here. there. Right. Both of those happening. And then year over year, it's not much higher. Uh, uh, The use offer counts slightly higher, but not a lot higher. So again, another positive. And then then now I see, uh, Joji, you kind of like zoomed out for the entire uh, 4,000 days. And you can see just the pattern repeating year in and year out. And and I mean, we both love seeing that, right? It's it's like we can really determine that, but we can really, Yeah. yeah, hang our hats on that. So many patterns with the sales rank, right? Always have that stereotypical U and basically since 2015 up until now. And then also that same pattern that Victor mentioned with the East Africa is always dipping during those two seasons. And then also like Victor mentioned, if we look at the used offer count today, even though we're at like, you know, a couple of days ago, we were at 38, 39. That's actually not historically the highest it's ever been. It's actually been much higher in the past. So it's not like we're in a realm of like, we've never been here before, like, one of the other books we looked at, this is a book that kind of has that stereotypical same pattern. I'd say it's in the ebb and flow of kind of just what you'd expect for the range of, let's say, variants, right, for a book right. like this. So something that looks great. Now, we should talk about some of the other things besides just being in a valley, making sure that the used offer count is looking normal. There's some other things that would excite us, and we will go into much more detail later on in the other videos in the How to Dominate Textbook season. So make sure you watch those other videos. But some of the other things that we really want to you know, look at that would make us happy would be, you know, normally what gets attached on the listing if there is a new edition. So you want to talk a little bit about, you know, new editions and what would make us, let's say, 
know, again, a little like green check mark, which would make us more excited about a textbook. Yeah, really quickly. I mean, when you go in and you see when you click on Amazon, um, a new listing and then you don't see a new book coming like there's no new edition here. That's actually a really big positive for us. That means that there's no new edition coming. This is the newest edition. And so uh, you know that because a lot of times if a new edition comes out, we tend to have to be more much more cautious. So on this particular book, there isn't that listing there. So we can definitely feel much more confident that the pattern is going to repeat again. And so, yeah, that's probably one of the biggest things. Yep. So you can see with this book, Classics of Criminology, it's kind of like another little green check mark. It's, hey, we don't see a new edition attached to this listing. That means if, you know, a college student needs this book, this is the actual, the cream of the crop. This is the actual book that they would require, like the one that is most prominently going to be used, you know, throughout the United States, which is good. Now, if we take a look at, let's say, this other book here, this literary criticism book again, we don't see a new edition, you know, being attached there either. Now, what's interesting about this family diversity book is if we actually look at the Amazon page here, you don't see there being a new edition attached here. But Victor, just because there isn't a new edition attached here, does that automatically mean there isn't a new edition? No. And one of the ways that like you would want to like dig in a little bit more is when that used offer count just drastically yeah. spikes like that. Aging. That's a really good telltale sign that there is a new edition either just about to come out or just came out. And uh, if you were to Google this, you can tell that, yeah, uh, they just announced it a couple of weeks ago that a new edition is just, uh, is about to come out. Right, so you can literally just copy the title. And again, this is, this should have an edition. Yeah, this says 3E at the bottom, so it's the third edition. So if you just Google this, I'm sure it'll show fourth edition, so it just came out. So again, those two things go hand in hand, usually a rise in off count. And the reason why the off count rise so much is, you have a large majority of students transitioning, right? Victor colleges right. and students transitioning to the next book, which means this older book, you, know, you have fewer people buying it. So, you know, basically the demand isn't keeping up with the supply coming in. Right. That's what that would look That's like. Right. Okay. Now, the other thing that we would want to look at that would make us excited is actually the fact that there aren't any large textbook sellers, you know, large mega sellers, as we call them. Yeah. You know, Rent You, Rock City Books, Apex Media, you know, there's a couple other that we don't see them with a bunch of units in stock. And there's a little bit of nuance here, Victor, because you will have some, you know, college textbooks that sell way more frequently than others, right? You'll have some college right. textbooks that are probably selling 50 times a day. And then you have other college textbooks might only be selling three or four times a day or maybe even once a day. So the number of copies that, you know, a mega bookseller has, yeah. you know, will be Very. different depending on the sales rank of that book. but what you would do is you would just click filter and click prime offer. And what what would we be looking, for? what would we be wanting to look for here or, or not see here that would make us happy? And- well, I mean, the best thing we can do is we click on the FBA offers and we see very like, say one at like $10 and then the next one being 40. All right, well, now we have a really great book. That makes me really right. excited. But, you know, another thing is we, we go and look through all the books and what we're wanting to see is just everyone having like one or two copies and nobody coming in with like, right. you know, 50 copies or more of a, of a book, especially at a really low price. Right. And so on this particular book, I'm not seeing any uh, mega seller on this listing that has a ton of yep. units. So I, I, I that's another green light here. Yeah. The only one that so Ecampus is a mega book seller, but notice yeah. only have two in stock there, which is good news. And everyone else seems that one, and then it, it it jumps up to forty. So the other thing to you you might want to say is, well, well, Joji, Victor, you know, why would I buy a book for you know eight dollars if there's other prime sellers today? Well, again, you've got to think about sales rank. You've got to think about the fact that we're in a a valley now. We're in a time where there's not very much demand coming up here. Victor is going to yeah. be a bunch of demand, right? Right. And who's going to have priority in terms of you know a, a, the actual customer or the student? The FBA offers get a priority, or the FBM offers get a priority. Oh, the FBA offer, because right. that student needs that book, right? They're, right. they're going to get their syllabus. They're going to tell them on Monday, the, te- the professor's going to tell them on Monday they need this book. And they need, it to, they need it for the next class. They need it in two days. And that's why they'll come in order from uh, FBA, and that's why we'll get the business. Yeah. And so think about it logically. It's like, okay, well, we're looking at a book that potentially has four or five total offer or total like uh, quantity in terms of FBA mm-hmm. prices, right? And then it goes up to 40. Well, you got to ask yourself, this August, September coming up, if you're looking at the sales rank, I mean, there's definitely way more than four or five sales here that, yeah. that are going to be occurring. You can even see how basically we start at the beginning at a 58 offer count and get down into 30. So at least, you know, 28 offers on the actual listing going off. So 
what we're trying to say here is that this book has enough to demand that all those lower FBA offers are very likely to get bought out. And the good news is that even though there is one mega uh, textbook seller that is FBA eligible here, there's only two at stock. What number here would actually, let's say, make you not want to buy this book, Victor? Yeah, it, it always depends. But on this particular uh, book, say maybe 10. If, if they had 10, I would then start thinking this is the yellow flag. If I saw them having like 20, that's a red flag that because this book doesn't have a lot of demand, but right. it really depends on how much demand the book has, uh, right. how many sales are happening during the season. Do, right. do I really decide whether or not um, this is a go or pass for me? Yeah. For example, like let's take a look at this, the family diversity back, uh, diversity book here. The sales rank of this book gets oh, much yeah. lower, right? So yeah. Victor's advice there would change a little bit because let's say we had the same sort of structure in terms of like five or six FBA you know, used offers. Yeah at 10 or eight to ten dollars and then it goes up to 40 well you know i asked victor well how many copies would you would ecampus have that make you not want to buy well in this case if ecampus has 10 i'm still thinking ecampus is something yes. pretty quick i wouldn't, I wouldn't 20. even i wouldn't even worry about them 20 still i'm good yeah so i'm good yeah. right because they're gonna sell really quickly because the demand for that book for this yeah. book is significantly different than the demand of the other book right now again we already talked about why we wouldn't buy this book here particularly but we wanted to show you the difference in the sales rank during the textbook season and you know, the number of actual, you know, perceived sales. Now, we actually did make a, a recent video as well um, about a, this really awesome feature called monthly sold year, which is something that is a really cool metric that just popped up on yeah. the Keepergraph. So make sure you go check out that video that was posted on as part of the Bookmine Academy series. But yeah, those are things that cumulatively are going to make us happy, right? So let's go ahead and review here, Victor. Okay, go for it. So the things that are going to make us really want to buy a book is the book is in a valley, right? Its current price is significantly below what the shoulder and peak prices are during the textbook season. That's good, right, Victor? Right, that's good. Right. Okay. The other yeah. thing that makes us really happy is making sure that there isn't a new edition. That what we're looking at is the newest edition. That makes us really happy. Yeah, yeah. Now, next, the next video in the series will be about more, you know, more in depth about that. What if there is a new edition? Does that mean we're not buying? No, that doesn't mean we're not buying. It could mean we're not buying, but it doesn't one hundred percent time. It's possible, mean. right? It's possible, yep. right? So we'll get more in depth on that in the next video of this series. So, you know, we're really happy if there if we do have the new edition. And then lastly, we're really happy if we don't see mega booksellers or even if we do, even if we do, they only have a few offers. Right. So anything else you want to add here before we move on to the next video? Oh, no, I think I think this is a great video. Um, Make sure you guys watch all five of them because we're really happy you guys dominate textbook season. Sounds good. See you guys in the next video. See you.